this is Velocity Keyboard, and the number one thing this does that other apps don't do is it does Velocity really well. Let me show you what I mean. That's, that's the number one reason. If, if there's nothing else you like about this app, as far as I know, this app is going to do Velocity better than anything else that you can get on the App Store right now. It's extremely sensitive, right down to very gentle touches with a wide range of, of volume levels, and it's extremely consistent. That being done, let me show you some other cool things that it does that most apps don't do. Aftertouch. So I'm using um, part of the iOS SDK called uh, Touch Radius, which means it, it's measuring the area of the uh, uh, the contact between my finger and the screen and we can use that to control MIDI CC's so I'm using it to control the filter cutoff here listen to this so of course you can assign that that's a MIDI CC you can assign it to anything you want any any synth parameter can be controlled by that uh, uh, that flattening of your finger if you're running this on an iPhone you can also use the the 3d touch of the iPhone and um, as a third parameter, you can use the vertical position within the key to control a third MIDI CC. So that means that you could potentially control three MIDI CCs at the same time, in addition to the velocity control you already have. Of course, it does bending. What this does differently from others is it has a very intelligent correction algorithm that is going to ensure that you're in tune whenever you play a note, and I think most others are doing that, but then it will back off the correction as you slide to allow you to, to slide around, and then when you are slowing down and you've, you've stopped on a key, it will very quickly lock back into the pitch so that you can go from here and it will be in tune where you started, in tune where you stopped, and yet you still have total control over it while you're moving. Moves when you're moving, it stops when you're stopping, and it stops on the, on the note. So this is the string layout, and this is familiar if you used our, our own iFretless apps, and it will be familiar for uh, users of other apps such as the um, GeoSynth and GeoShred, um, uh, and several other MIDI controllers are also doing this. Another thing that, uh, that happens in keyboard layout that doesn't happen in other apps is you can be in keyboard layout but still switch to other scales. So I'm in keyboard layout with a C major scale, but I can switch to a C uh, minor pentatonic scale. And you can see now the, um, the keys are still in the same place, but it's darkened the keys that are out of the scale. And yet we're still keeping that keyboard layout configuration. This app really handles a variety of orientations and does it in a really nice way. So right now I have the default layout for keyboards on full screen for iPhone, iPad, but I can turn the iPad into portrait orientation and that's also supported. Now you can see I'm, I'm no longer um, filling the screen, but if I go in here I could increase the number of rows. When I go into portrait mode and I adjust the number of rows, it's automatically scaled the horizontal scale. So I've got at least a full octave on the screen and I've filled the screen vertically and things fit quite, generally fit quite nicely. So here I am in a portrait layout in AUM with the screen somewhat scaled down and I'm going to adjust the rows and watch what happens when I I've selected the same number of rows I already had. It's looking at what the what the height of these keys needs to be to fit three of them into this vertical space. And after it does that, then it adjusts the horizontal space to fill the screen with that size of keys. So um, if you compare this to other apps, many other apps that do MIDI controller inside of audio unit end up stretching the keys into odd shapes as you as you stretch the, the screen. This one, every time you update the number of rows, it will try to do something intelligent so that you get at least an octave on the screen and you're filling the vertical space and having a nice layout. 
And if you don't like what it does, of course, you can go in and change it. Like if I want more than an octave, uh, I need 12 notes on the screen, I can do that and it'll scale accordingly. Um, and then at any time, I, if I wanted to, you know, rotate over here and it handles that. And um, I'll go and go to full screen and it's handling that nicely. Okay, I'm gonna go to string layout. Let's get a full octave in there, good. I can scale that right down like that. And this gives me a very tight, small row where I still have a lot of room to adjust parameters with my synth. So unlike what you get if you just use the default keyboard here, I'm gonna hide that, um, it, it fits into an even smaller space than the default keyboard, and yet it's giving you uh, touch sensitive velocity, it's giving you all of those um, CC controls and uh, and the full set of all the capabilities you have in the app when it's in a full size, full screen layout. 